Journal Club, this journal can add 10 years to your life. This journal article can add 10 years more, actually, than 10 years to your life. That's a lot. I'm Dr. Paul Zalzo. I'm Dr. Brad Winning. Welcome to Talking with Docs. And what we love to do at Talking with Docs is bring you the latest literature, the latest science that we've kind of found or that's come across our desk that we thought would be really interesting to share with you and we critique it, okay? Yep. And generally there's some articles that are like, hey, we don't think it's a great article or hey, this is a good article, yep. maybe not. This happens to be an article that I think is really good. And I'd say that generally speaking, we're just trying to share the information, we don't make it up. At the end of the day, we're just giving it to you, you can process it, make decisions for yourself. We don't have anything to gain. Did you read. write this article? I did not write it. I didn't write this article. No. You I, didn't write this article. No. We're just reading this article. That's right. But we think it's an interesting read for anyone who's out there. The article is entitled, Global Effect of Cardiovascular Risk Factors on Lifetime Estimates. Okay. It's published in the New England Journal of Medicine. Pretty good journal. Came out a month ago, like okay. March 2025. Yeah. And the first thing we always look at when we're reading an article is like, who sponsored this? Conflict of interest. Who paid for this? What's the conflict of interest? Apparently, there's no sponsors with this article. So it is ACA, ACA, Acapella? No, academic, academic. article. Okay. So it wasn't sponsored by eggs? No. It wasn't sponsored by eggs. It's going to take you a while to recover from that last video we made about eggs. See the word. Fired up about eggs. All right. So there's no sponsor here. There's no eggs in this trial. Yes. This is basically an academic paper. Yes. And what I love about it, in addition to the fact that it's not sponsored, okay. so no one's paying to do this, is it includes over two million people. Yes, big study. Okay. It spans um, 133 cohorts in 39 countries across six continents. So all different kinds of people, <clears throat> men and women. That's it. It's yeah. very, so it's very universal right. in that sense. The okay. only trouble with that is sometimes when you have a really heterogeneous population, that can kind of make things a little bit trickier. But I agree. Generally speaking, I'd rather have to be doing Okay, party pooper. <laughs> um, sure. Whatever. But it is very applicable. Very, we can, it's, uni it's almost universal. Right. Okay. And cardiovascular disease, number one killer still around still, the world. Yeah, still number one killer. Yeah. And so it looks at the five, now these five risk factors that they talk about, that's the classic risk factors. Yes. These are, and these, these are a bit different than when we were in medical school. One of yeah. them has kind of changed. Yes. But you've got smoking, okay. hypertension, okay. high cholesterol, yep. high body mass index. Or really, or really low. Or I guess really they're just talking low, about since your weight or your body mass. Yeah. Or really low yes. body mass and diabetes. Yes. Okay, those are the five that they were referring to. When I was in medical school, the five risk factors, instead of BMI, we had family history in there. Right, okay. <clears throat> but family history is not really modifiable, is it? I don't think so. Hey, Dad, I got some bad news. Yeah, I'm leaving be the family. Be better. <laughs> I'm leaving the family. Yeah. I'm going up to Otto over there. He's 95. I'm going to yeah. ask him to adopt me. Agreed. Yeah, okay, so you can't, can't it's not that. modifying. Effect. So, but okay. I guess the idea now is these five modifiable risk factors yeah. are the big five risk factors. So we've taken out family history, which is a big risk factor for cardiovascular disease, but it's not in this list of five. And it looked at its impact on not only incidents of cardiovascular disease, but also um, death. Death. Yeah. So how much it would change. <laughs> You're yes. likely to have getting cardiovascular disease or when you got it or whatever, and, and whether or not it's going to kill you. Yes. Yeah. And it turns out that these five risk factors can take over a decade of your life away. Yeah, it's a lot. Can you believe that? I, these it's five, not surprising because, you I mean, if you think, oh, hey, guess what? If you have high blood pressure, yeah. you have diabetes, mm -hmm. and you're overweight, yeah. and you smoke, right. right? You have cholesterol. And you have high cholesterol, chances are you're not going to be around as long. Okay. But 10 years, Yes, it's significant, it's right. legit. All right, so let's break it down. So, so they broke it up to, to, when they looked at the men and women. Yes. So if someone that has all of these risk factors, all five, all five. right? Yeah. They have a 24, a woman has a 24% chance of getting cardiovascular disease. As man, opposed to? No, so a man has 38%. Okay. As opposed to if you have none of them, the risk was 13.3% and 106 Ironically, if the men had zero risk factors, they actually had an overall lower risk than the women. Right. Right. Yeah. And what this translated to is that if you had none of the risk factors, it added 14.5 uh, years to your life if you're a woman and 11.8 years as a man. So more than a decade more if you got rid decade. of all these five risk factors. We okay. recognize that this might not be possible for you, right. but it is a lofty and admirable and worthy goal to try to get rid of them. And they looked at these risk factors at a couple of age points. Yes. 50, 
I think 50, 55, and 60, I believe, or something yep. in, in around there. Yep. And that's sort of that key time point that they looked at to see when you have these risk factors and what it's going to do to you later. And same thing for the risk of cardiovascular disease. It was your, your odds of getting cardiovascular disease before the age of 90. Yes, yeah. right. Once you're Which is a good point to be like, well, how do you know? Like, yeah. it, it is a little tricky that way. And they follow these people along to determine that. Yeah. Um, now, the question is, if you modify these risk factors, will that help you? Yeah. Or once you've had them, you're done. Sure. Turns out that if you modify the risk factors, yes, indeed, it can help you. And that key decade that they looked at was between 50 and 60. Thankfully, well, that's where we're living right, right now. Right, right there. Let's get. Let's start modifying. That may be why this article is so relevant <laughs> for like, me. Like, I gotta change some things. <laughs> okay, and then now, if we look at those risk factors and go from which ones are really bad to which ones aren't quite as bad, yes. the two really bad ones are smoking and diabetes. Right. They're the bad actors, and yep. then hypertension, BMI. Yeah. Not quite as bad as the other two, but still have an effect. Yeah. And then cholesterol, probably. Uh, and interestingly about the cholesterol, because a lot of people are going to be typing a comment now yeah. saying, ha ha, yes. cholesterol doesn't matter. Well, it's yeah. because both cholesterol and weight historically have a J or a U-shaped curve. And we've talked about this before, when on either ends of the extreme, this can actually yeah. be bad for you. So obviously being overweight is a problem. But being drastically underweight obviously is also very unhealthy and potentially a sign that you have other medical problems. Absolutely. And the same with low cholesterol. People that have a lot of chronic diseases can end up with low cholesterol. So it becomes like a marker for um, bad outcomes, even death. Right. You're like, well, look, low cholesterol is really bad. Yes. Not low cholesterol for taking medication to lower your cholesterol isn't bad. Right. But having too low of a cholesterol is a sign that you have other problems. And then that can skew the data. And that's why when they reanalyze the cholesterol data, they say, well, actually, if we just use a marker of high cholesterol above two standard deviations, this became yeah. significant and said, yeah, this can add years to your life if you can get your cholesterol back into a healthy range. Yeah, they, they had to do some funky statistics once they looked at the hypertension, the BMI, and the cholesterol. Right. They actually looked at regional norms and then assigned a value of two standard deviations higher than the regional norm to be a trigger yeah. because the original cutoffs they used didn't really show as a significant effect. So I didn't want to give any cutoff numbers or sure. anything like that because it is really complicated in this article yeah. what the cutoff numbers We're are. We're going to provide so, a link if you're interested yeah, in seeing it. absolutely. Free. Try there and go. figure it out. Yeah. Um, but basically, just in general speaking, qualitatively, those five factors are the ones... Carried the most weight. Yeah. What they found, though, unfortunately, is that for diabetes, maybe because it was harder to control, mm -hmm. it didn't come up as the most beneficial to modify. But blood pressure was number one for reducing your risk of cardiovascular disease. If yeah. between the age of 50 and 60, you can reduce your blood pressure to a healthy range, and that was below the 130, yeah. that had the most benefit for reduction in cardiovascular disease. And not surprisingly, the one that modified your risk of dying the most, smoking. Yeah. So if you're in your 50s, you look at these five risk factors, yeah. okay? Diabetes, hypertension, high BMI, smoking, high cholesterol. Look at those five things to help determine how much of life, healthy life you can extend. Yes. Okay? Those are the really big actors right now in this decade of life. Yeah. Under this article. Yeah, so so not totally surprising, but I think it packages it in a neat little way and really quantifies how much benefit you can get by living a healthier life. And we've talked about this, like the, the pillars, the pillars of health, right? So yeah. be sensible. So eat a healthy diet. Not a specific diet. We've talked about this before. Good diet. Normal portions, whole foods, avoid processed food, probably leaning towards more plants and animals. Get out there and exercise, do something on a daily basis if possible. Mm -hmm. Get some good sleep, reduce your stress, stay connected, and avoid those toxic substances. And look at that. That was toxic substances right in the one of the That's six, it. right? One toxic five. substances right there. Boom, bang, yeah. bong, smoking. It's going to do it. I know. All right, there you go. Take a look at this article if you're interested. Leave a comment and let us know what you think about papers like this and whether or not you think any of these are modifiable or ways that you have modified some of these that can maybe help other people. If you like this video, please like and subscribe to our channel. Decade. Decade of life. Remember, you are in charge of your own. I'll see you next time and maybe for the next 10 years.